this video we're going to be going over the advantages of using the Century Bob instead of the heavy bag. So not, not to cut out the heavy bag, I would never tell one of my students or one of my fighters or give advice to another boxer not to use the heavy bag, just adding in the Century Bob as well. And uh, the reason for that is simple, it's just the anatomy of it. So when you're hitting the heavy bag, you could target, you know, you could target head, body, head, you could throw hooks to the heavy bag, but it's just not the same when you have that anatomy to it. Okay, so with the Century Bob, you got a lot of anatomy there. So, for example, uppercuts. When I'm throwing uppercuts on the heavy bag to the, to the jaw, I shadow box the uppercut, right? I don't make any contact with the heavy bag. So I shadow box it, not just not to limit myself, because you don't want to hold back that uppercut when you're throwing combinations on the heavy bag. You never want to hold back anything in your arsenal. So when I'm using the heavy bag, I'll make contact, contact, and I'll shadow box the uppercut, just not to hold back my uppercuts. But on a heavy bag, you can't land uppercuts to the head. You can land uppercuts to the body, but uh, not to the head. But with the Sentry Bob, for example, you could throw that same combo, jab, cross, scoop the uppercut right under the chin with the Sentry Bob snapping his head back when you land it good and clean. Okay, so that's one good reason that adding the Sentry Bob in to your heavy bag drills is going to help you. So maybe you do six rounds on the heavy bag normally, you might want to cut it down to four rounds with two rounds on the Sentry Bob, okay? So the heavy bag is great. I'll always use the heavy bag. I'll never have any of my students cut out the heavy bag, but adding in the Century Bob, I, I kind of, when I first started with it, I felt like it was a combination of, uh, of focus pads and heavy bag, right? Because you have, you have the resistance there for when you throw those hard shots, just like the heavy bag, but you also got a lot more precision with your strikes, just like when you're using the mitts. So just like focus pad training, using the mitts, a lot of mitt work, you can jab to bolt mitts. That's going to be uh, sharpening up your timing for a fighter's head movement. He slips the first jab, moves his head to the other side, so you're jabbing side to side, jabbing one mitt, two mitt, right? So I always thought of it like a combination between the heavy bag and the mitt training. <clears throat> but So this is a great one to add in just because of that anatomy. So if I'm working on slipping left and landing that left hook, I know I'm landing it perfectly on the jaw, on that bob there, right? Coming to the uppercut next, I know I'm landing it, right? Another great thing about the Century Bob is you could adjust his height. So standing tall, I'm a little bit taller than him here, but this is actually an opponent the same height as me because once I go into my fighting stance, now we're the same height, you see? So when you adjust your Century Bob, you don't want to stand tall and adjust them eye to eye. You want to make sure in your fighting stance, you're eye to eye, okay? So this is another 5'10", 5'11", opponent right here, okay? If you're going up against somebody taller than you, the bob goes up to six feet. You could put them up a little bit higher and get used to striking a little bit more up at the dude's face, okay? <clears throat> another great thing about the Century Bob, when I get low and I land those body shots, I know I'm hitting them clean and I know I'm hitting them to the ribs. On a heavy bag, someone might go a little too wide, right? And be landing all their left hooks on his kidneys, right? On the Century Bob, I'll notice it right away. I'll see that I'm throwing a little too wide, I'm coming a little bit too behind my opponent, and I'm landing illegal shots, okay? So that's a great thing about the Century Bob. Once you get that first slip, you know to dig in right to those ribs, either with a body hook or even with that shovel hook coming up into the ribs, okay? Real cool things about the bob. When you're jabbing, let's say you're jabbing an opponent with real good head movement. What do we do when our opponent has real good head movement? We go to the body, right? Let's say he's real good at protecting the body, right? Bringing the elbows in, protecting the body. I could target his chest, I could target his shoulder to turn him, get him off balance and come with that right hand. So there's a lot of real cool stuff that we could work on with the Century Bob that we really can't work on with the heavy bag. We could use a little imagination and try to picture it on the heavy bag, but there's really no uh, image there to show that amount of anatomy, targeting the temple, targeting the jaw, targeting under the chin, okay? 
targeting the nose with the jabs, okay? So sometimes when we're working the heavy bag, we'll be working on our jab, right? First punch we throw, first punch we learn. You know, most most uh, easiest punch to reach your opponent with is your lead hand, so you're gonna jab with that left hand. So when we're working the jab on the heavy bag, we're imagining targeting the nose, we're imagining targeting the tip of the chin, but on the heavy bag, it's not as precise as on the bow. So if I'm, if I'm trying to target the nose and I'm not landing cleanly, I'll know it immediately. I see that I'm landing real good on the nose with that jab, okay? If I'm targeting the chin, I know I'm landing that chin. If I miss that chin by an inch, I'm in his chest, neck, okay? So I want to land right on the tip of that chin. When you land on the chin like that, it pushes his jaw back, it squeezes his nerve. That's why they call it the button. When a dude gets caught right on the chin, they call it the button. You got hit right on the button because it makes them drop. Pushes your jaw back, squeezes the nerves behind your jaw, and makes your lights go out. Okay, so targeting the jaw with, with the jab is good. That's why fighters keep their, their chin down. They don't want to get caught up on the chin, okay? Keep the chin down, all fighters. <clears throat> A lot of guys target the nose because they know that's where they could do some damage. So I see a lot of fighters, their head snaps back when they get hit with that jab, right? jab to the jaw it's going to do a lot more damage set up that next punch okay when you throw that one two so it's good to target the nose it's good to target the jaw it's good to target the eye sockets with the jab right if you notice he likes to slip a certain way let's say he likes to slip to his right which is my left over here you could start targeting this side because the second he sees that flinch he's going to start to slip so you target that right eye hopefully he'll slip into it you'll land on his left eye okay so targeting certain areas on the bob, it's an inch difference, you know, whether I target the nose or the chin, it's about an inch difference, okay? So on the heavy bag, you're kind of looking in a whole general area, you're just throwing in that general area, or you're even throwing too low and you don't even notice it, because if I was jabbing on the heavy bag right now, I'd be trying to throw my jab as straight, tight, and clean as possible, right? Keeping the elbow in, and my jab would actually be going right here to his throat, okay? Whereas he's the same height as me, he's in his fighting stance, we're eye to eye, I really need to be jabbing a little bit more up to get him where I want to get him, okay? If I was on the heavy bag, I'd be working on snap, precision, and just keeping that elbow in and throwing that jab as straight and as hard as I can with good speed, good snap. So a good snap, snapping the jab back. So now with the sentry bob, I could target the right side of his face, target the chin, target the nose, eye socket, eye socket, chest, body. Okay, a lot of anatomy there for me to work with. So we're gonna be doing a lot of videos with drills on the sentry bob. I hope you look forward to those. Be sure to subscribe, look, look towards those future videos, doing those drills on the Century Bob, and try to add it into your regimen, try to add it into your training.